Welcome to the AI for Good panel at South by Southwest. We're very excited to have everyone here today to talk about the potential for AI to do good in the world. So Don, when you think about AI and what you've done, what excites you about the, the AI and all of the conversations around how it can be used these days? You know, what I'm most excited about is actually the civic uses, um, and particularly when AI can actually get into the hands of people who see the world a little bit differently. Um, so an example of that is right now I'm working with um, a, 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 a group of, um, a citizen group who is concerned about air quality. They have a point source polluter that they're worried about. Um, and actually they have very good air quality instrumentation um, going on. And they've literally spent the last year just getting their heads around, like, what is this data actually telling us, right? How can we represent that data? What can we actually do with it? They also did a pilot where they combined wearables and other kinds of health tracking to figure out, you know, geez, do our, you know, blood oxygens or heart rates spike when there's pollution in the air, right? That kind of time series sort of correlation is simple to many of the people in, our, in this room, but it's really not simple at all if you're an ordinary person just worried about the air. And so now they're asking questions of, well, wait a second, can we actually, you know, sort of use some sort of technique to say, oh, you know what, this spike when it's these two chemicals and it goes over this threshold, that looks a whole lot like the point source polluter, right? But when it happens a little bit differently, that's actually the guy down the road who's like painting his car or whatever, right? And so they're asking that question of, you know, uh, of the data, but, you know, that's a perfect application of AI. And then the question then becomes, how can we get people like that to actually take advantage of the technology and, and know what's in it to be able to you know, really understand what comes out. If you think ahead in the potential, what industry or social challenges do you think will benefit most from AI? So um, Coursera has, uh, since it started about five years ago, we have 25 million learners with 75% of our learners outside the United States. Um, what we've seen is that, um, in general, what, what's happened is education has always been like, let me go and take a class, and then maybe based on what you've taken, we can recommend something next for you, of what we, something we think you might like, kind of like what Netflix does with movies. Now, imagine if instead we took that a step further. So I could say something like, um, I want to learn digital marketing. And I could take an assessment to know where I'm at. And we would be able to map the skills of all of the 1,500 plus courses on our platform. And I would be able to know exactly which class to go into at which point. The quizzes and the assessments in that learning, my learning path, would be able to guide me. Like it would be able, like maybe I'm motivated by competition, maybe I'm motivated by rewards, maybe there's this trend of me missing these problems. Um, and, you know, my goal at the end of this is to get a job. So can I, uh, how can we help almost this personal coaching through the learning? So much of education has been limited by making it affordable and accessible and having it high quality. A lot of times that's based on, like, where you live. Um, and Instead, I think with AI, what we can do now is make the world's best content available to everyone in a much more personalized way. I think that's really powerful. I mean, it really unleashes the potential of humans. What do you think is going to be one really exciting thing that's happened in AI? What's something that you really think in the next five years? And that's a long time in technology. I mean, that's, that's eons, right? But what's, what do you think we can sit here and say this is going to be fundamentally different because of AI. Pratul, any ideas? Yeah, five years is a long time, actually. It is. Yeah. <laughs> so, I really don't know five years, but I can tell you like maybe two, three years what it's going to be. So, three years back I was in China and uh, obviously I had a lot of trouble understanding their thing. So, what I was doing, like I was trying to locate the English word in their conversation and I was trying to make sense what they are trying to say. So, I thought that uh, why don't we have some like automatic translator and nowadays we have that. Mm -hmm. So, you speak and they translate you in whatever language you want. But still you think, because many people use two, three different languages, right? So, mix English, mix other language. So, that's why you find the machine different part because they expect always the English or same language input and then they translate the same output. 
So what I'm thinking that that should be a global model. You feed any kind of language, and that will be output of whatever language you want in whatever comfortable thing. So that's what I think it would be a huge removing the communication barrier. So wherever part of world you go, and you just keep on and put your headphone, and you getting the things in whatever language you want. So I think that would be a breakthrough in deep learning. Well, so I want to thank everyone um, today for your time here, and everyone who's been. Um, listening and asking good questions. I would encourage all of you to find out more about AI, deep learning, data science, what you can do with it. Talk to people about it. It isn't scary, um, but it is confusing at times. But you can get a lot of information. Coursera, shameless plug for Coursera. Yeah. But, and if you'd like to know more about any, talk to any of us and let us know how we can help.